What is up guys, Mike Wang here, and today I'm here to talk about Bitcoin. And I'll be honest, I did not see this drop coming. The reason why it crashed so hard, um, a lot of people are talking about the Chinese pulling their money out of exchanges like Huobi, Charlie Munger saying that crypto should never have been invented. But the truth is, it fell because it was time to. And the drop was so severe because of futures positions, uh, DeFi lending, basically all factors that indicate how the entire market is over leveraged um, to its max. And that's what led to this drop. And on my trading view page, I did have a case where I anticipated a move down to 51K. If you guys look at this, this was an Elliott wave analysis that I did um, where I anticipated a move to 51K before we moved upwards. And I thought this was invalidated, to be honest, because we saw strong support at 53K, the 99 uh, moving average holding like a champ and all that. Um, but as you guys all know, we dropped down to like 42K within one day, and now we're trading at uh, 49.2K. So moving on to today's video, I want to go over the good news first, right? I don't want to be a perma bear, uh, sorry, a perma bull. But good news is good news and facts are facts. I'm trying to look at the mar market as objectively as I can. And this is how I'm seeing it. The macro cycle is not over yet. Um, so that's great news for all of us. It's not over because there's no clear bearish confirmation that it is. Um, if we look at the Elliott Wave count that I've been talking about, you know, starting from the bottom at 3.1K because this is where we bottomed out and this is where we can say that um, the beginning of the cycle began at this point. So we can see that uh, counting impulse waves, this is wave one, two, three. We're now in the face of uh, wave four or we've either completed wave four with the severe drop yesterday. And uh, now we have that final leg up to wave five at one point that's gonna take place, right? Now, in terms of wave four, this entire move over here is a running flat pattern in my perspective. So this is what a running flat looks like, right? It's a corrective ABC wave, but what you need to keep in mind is that this C wave over here completes a little higher than the A wave. And that's because there's still a lot of buy pressure uh, in the market and people want to buy before the correction is over and that's how this corrective wave forms and I'm seeing this corrective wave form for uh, our wave four over here uh, this will be wave a b and c and now the question is how far down is wave c gonna go right so in order to figure that out uh, we need to zoom into the daily chart and take a look at what's happening and for the daily chart this is what I have been referring to recently. I've covered this in my newsletter, by the way. If you haven't joined, make sure to check that out on my website. Link in the description below. But basically, on the daily chart, this is what I'm seeing. And this is a completely new concept. I didn't want to talk about it on YouTube because it's a tool that I personally use. And it's a tool that I wanted to share with uh, the subscribers to my newsletter. And they already know this. But this is how it works. When we break out of an accumulation zone and see a swing up, a move up, right? This arrow shows the length of that trend. This is how far uh, this one move goes up. And when we see this move up, there's a high probability that it's going to move up another leg in the same proportion, regardless of the corrective wave are the corrective price action that takes place in the middle. So what does this mean, right? I have all this labeled in the um, arrows just so that you guys can understand and see it better. But basically this arrow, this arrow on top over here is a copy of the arrow on the bottom. So we saw the price break out of the accumulation range, make a local top, right? And whatever correction it makes, we don't know how severe this is gonna be. Might even go down as low as 20K right? But we know that it's eventually going to make another leg up to the same degree, to the same extent, with the same momentum and strength behind and move up in the same length. So for this case, we can see how this 
marked the top of the trend at 64K, right? And this applies to the bearish trends as well. So we can see a corrective wave, a breakdown actually, from the swing high to the swing low. And we mark this as the red arrow, right? We see a dead cap bounce. Uh, and based on this red arrow, we can project that, this, uh, that Bitcoin is going to make another move down in the same length with the same strength and momentum backing the bearish trend. And eventually what happens... We see it move down to the 29K range where it bottoms out. Again, same thing for this green arrow over here. There's a phase of accumulation that takes place. We see it break out, make a local top, and we copy paste this arrow. And we can see how this trend is going to play out to the same degree and mark the top at 69K, right? So initially, I did expect the same move to take place up to 100K, and I still think this is valid. Uh, ju it's just not going to happen at this point. I do think eventually we're going to make, uh, we're going to see a move up that tops out at 102K. That tops out at 102.8K, and we see some resistance there. But for now, this is what I'm looking at. So you see how this logic applies to all the moves marking the local tops and local bottoms, right? So trying to figure out where the next local bottom might be, we can look at it this way, right? So we made a swing move from the swing high to the swing low to this point. So connecting this arrow, we can see that this was a dead cap bounce. And it's more likely that we make a move down to the 38K region, copy and pasting the length of this arrow down. What does that mean? It may look like bulls have managed to secure the 42 to um, 46K region, 49K, sorry, 49K region, but eventually the price may bleed down to 38K levels, just like it did over here as well. But fact of the matter is, even if we do move down to 37.8K, which is marked over here, the overall structure doesn't change as long as we manage to stay above uh, the bottom where wave B ends. So what we're looking at basically is um, wave where wave A ends, sorry, because in terms of the Elliott wave perspective, this would be wave A, this is wave B, and we're now looking at wave C play out, right? This is what I was talking about on the weekly chart, wave A, B, and C. So as long as we don't break down below 28.5K, um, which is where we saw the wick take place for the end of wave A, then the running flat pattern is still valid. Now, interestingly enough, this 37.8K region also happens to be the 0 0.786 Fibonacci support from the swing low at the July bottom to the swing high at 69K. So to me personally, the way I see it is, we might have some bounces up and down. We might even retest 53K before we drop back down. But ultimately, I feel like we are going to retest that support at 37.8K before we can make any further move upwards. And now, in terms of the market cycle top, if we do reach a market cycle top, I expect to see a blow-off top pattern, as we have seen for the other cycles that Bitcoin has undergone in the past. So here's a chart from uh, April 2013. This is from uh, December 2013 to January 2014. And this is the chart from 2017. And as you guys can all see, these charts all demonstrate sharp moves upward almost a straight move downward and a dead cap bounce before it slowly bleeds out and that's how we know that a blow off top pattern has taken place and that the market has topped out and this would mark the top of the market cycle the bullish rally that we're looking at so structurally this is what i would want to see this blow off top pattern doesn't look anything like the trading range that we are seeing on the daily which also substantiates my argument that this is not the top and that we are yet to see the macro cycle top. So guys, I want you to know that managing your risk at this point is extremely important. I'll be honest, I had an analysis up 
where I talked about the probabilities of a potential drop, but I didn't follow my plan. The support at 53k was holding so well, I thought the bottom was in. And I was wrong and I admit that, right? And I'm only human, so I can't always be trading uh, based on my plans. I've, I'm a human with emotions too, right? But the ideal is that we, f we stick to our plans and we have strict confirmation and negation zones, right? Um, I know that this drop may look extremely severe, and that this may look like a good chance for us to ape in before 100k because everyone's talking about that 100k target but it's not going to be an easy ride at all i mean look at this we've been trading in this range since the beginning of this year right the move between 30k to 69k we're basically in a trading range and it's not an easy ride you know you make money you make money going upwards you don't manage your risk, so you lose it all again, right? And you try to make money back up again, and you don't manage your risk at this point, so you're losing your money again here as well. So please manage your risk, set your confirmation levels, and trade according to your plan. And just to organize everything I wanted to say, if we manage to somehow miraculously pump real hard, and break through 61k levels like a boss and close above it as well then i'll resume bullish that means we're gonna go to 100k in like two weeks i won't doubt that but i think that's a highly unlikely scenario at the moment currently i think a move down to 38k regions specifically 37.8k is the more probable case and I'm going to shave off some of my bags when we see a technical bounce um, because I don't expect us to drop immediately. There's got to be some sort of technical bounce, a relief bounce that fools people into thinking that the bottom is in, right? And when that does happen, that's when I'll shave off some of my bags and I'll set my orders at around 38K. Now, if we do drop below 38K, that's when I'll start getting worried. And if we drop below 28.5K uh, as well, then I'll know that the bull market as we know it is completely over because that will be my confirmation that this market has topped out. And I'll acknowledge the fact that 69K was the top. But until then, the macro bullish structure remains unchanged. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. Share this with your friends as well, especially the ones who panic sold this bottom. Subscribe for more content. And if you guys haven't yet, make sure to really check out my newsletter. Um, you guys can check out the quality of it, what I offer. Uh, and um, honestly, I think the content that I offer for these prices are an absolute steal. So make sure to check that out. Again, if you guys stuck around until the end of this video, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.